Good morning interweb, World Builders Log 8. Today we're going to do a polishing up tweaking video, but first, as always, follow up. First point of follow up, should have mentioned this in the last show, but didn't. The apparent size and brightness sheet does not take into account orbital inclination or orbital eccentricity. This is just to simplify calculations. Both of those parameters would affect how bright various objects would appear, but for the sake of simplification, the spreadsheet just assumes those values are zero. Next up, uh, people were asking what the values on the various axes of the chart are. They are distances in AU. They've now been marked in on the chart in the latest version of the spreadsheet. You can go download it, links in the description. One person asked whether or not my gas giant would have rings. Answer, yes, but they're not going to be like Saturn's rings. They're going to be more like the rings of Jupiter or Neptune or Uranus. Purely because if I was to give my gas giant Saturnian-like rings, I'd want to like do the math on them, figure out how wide they are, where the gaps are, how thick they are, etc. And that's kind of beyond the scope of this kind of simple, basic sort of setup. So gas giant has rings, just very tenuous ones. And the final point of follow-up, lots of people are asking how I make the reference doc. I use an app called Adobe InDesign. Like I'm already paying for the Adobe suite, so I figured I may as well use their kind of like magazine layout app thing here. Also, this series is just a really good excuse for me to learn a new app. If you've got the Adobe suite, go check it out. I think this app is really cool. If you don't and you're on Mac, you could use Apple Pages. Although I really dislike Apple Pages, but it might work for someone. You can also just use Google Docs or Microsoft Word. Although I find that strict word processors handle image placement not as well as sort of these kind of more like magazine layouty type apps. I don't even know what they're really called. But yeah, so that's what I use, Adobe InDesign. And that is follow-up done. Let's do some polishing. So I'm gonna go back over all the sheets and change some things here and there. I'm not gonna explain what each of the parameters are because we've already done that in previous videos. So this is gonna be a bit of a, like a speed run. So the star, I am perfectly happy with the star. Nothing needs to change here. Same thing with the galaxy. I'm pretty cool with my solar neighborhood. I don't think I want to go change anything here. Yeah. Planetary system, for now, I'm okay, but I, I, I want to change the orbit of my home world, which we'll get to in a bit. So this, this may change, it may not, we'll see. Now the planet tab, there are a couple of things here I want to change. First being the atmosphere. So recall that this planet with an Earth-like atmosphere, oh actually no, I'm just going to do that. Okay, let's return this to a kind of more Earth-like atmosphere in terms of carbon dioxide. So uh, I recall the Earth has about 0.04% carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. I think, let me just fact check that. Yeah, 0.04 and change. So with Earth-like levels of greenhouse gases, the greenhouse effect on the planet will be equal to one, as previously explained, and that puts the sort of like air quotes natural state of this world at about negative three degrees Celsius, which is hella cold and not something I want. I want it to be close to modern Earth-like values. So what I did was I just randomly chose 0.16% carbon dioxide and then bumped the greenhouse effect up to 1.9, which is fine, but it's kind of like plucking numbers out of thin air. So I did a bit of digging, came across this site, EOS, an unbroken record of climate during the age of the dinosaurs. So a kind of like study of the Cretaceous period with a view to how it can inform us about greenhouse gases and global warming. And there was an interesting line here, if I can find it back. Here, these conditions resemble the most extreme scenario that the IPCC, that's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, has predicted could occur by the end of this century with CO2 levels greater than 1,200 parts per million by volume and global temp temperatures roughly 4% higher. So I was like, okay, cool. Let me just take this value of 1,200 parts per million per volume and use it to increase the temperature of the planet by four degrees Celsius. So it's something a little bit more concrete to go on as opposed to just picking numbers out of thin air. So let's do that. Let's see where that gets us. So first we need to convert this into parts per million. And that's really simple. To convert a percentage to parts per million, you simply take that percentage and you multiply it by 10,000. So in this atmosphere, carbon dioxide is at 1,600 parts per million. So let's make that 1,200. So we drop this to 0 0.12. Yep, 1,200 parts per million. And again, going off 
this here, that's going to increase the temperature by four degrees Celsius. So if we pop back up to our greenhouse effect, Earth is one. So I'm going to fiddle with this until this is increased by four degrees Celsius, i.e. until we get to one degree Celsius. There we go. Okay, so the greenhouse effect is 1.2. Now that, obviously, is not the same as modern day Earth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my planet inward in the habitable zone to increase the temperature. So if I take my semi-major axis, let's go 1.65 and we'll see that that increases the temperature. So 1.60, 9 degrees, I want to get to between 14 and 16 degrees. 1.59, we're getting there, 1.58, 5.7, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.9, 1.
maybe consider basing it off the mass of the planet and the mass of the iron core in the planet. And they supplied this empirical formula, which I think is really cool. So I'm going to apply this formula to the spreadsheet. We'll see what we get. And then if you guys like that functionality, I'll add it to the main spreadsheet. All right, so uh, time lapse time. Okay, so I had put in 6.61 grams per centimeter cube for my original planet of 2.7 Earth masses. In fact, let's just put that back in. So I'm gonna copy that value, just paste it over here for posterity. Okay, so the formula here predicts a density of 6.72 grams per centimeter cubed, and I had 6.1. So I was a little bit off of what the empirical formulas tell us. And let's pop this back in then. So the basic shtick here with this giganto formula is that it takes the core mass fraction of Earth, checks your mass, and then spits out a empirically proven density, should we say. And the core mass fraction is like how much of the mass of the planet does the core take up as a percentage. The value for Earth is about 0.35. So assuming the same core mass fraction for our planet, which I think is a good assumption to make, we should get a density of 6.62. I think that is class. So let me know if you want that in the official release. What that will basically mean is that this cell will no longer be user, user editable. It'll be auto-generated, which I think is actually great. But do, but do let me know. So that, I think, is the planet tab. Everything else I am happy with. Yes. Yeah, okay, onwards. Moon tab. Do we want to change anything? in the moon tab. Mass of the planet. Oh, stuff is going to change. This is all fine, but we may as well use the new density equation here as well. So hold on, time lapse, engaged. Be back in a second. Okay, and what is the core mass fraction of the moon? Yes, the Canberra Moon Festival. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, so it's 20% the radius of the moon. I'm not sure that's what I'm after. Hmm. Hmm, okay, more research needed. Gotta go to page two here. That's how you know deep research is occurring. Okay, our estimates, our estimates of a presently relaxed lunar CMB, what is a CMB, core mantle boundary, translates to a core mass fraction in the range of 1.59 to 1.77%, with a present day free core notation, notation, within 365 plus or minus 100 years. Okay, so most of that is Greek to me, but is that... Is that the core mass fraction in the moon? Okay, hold on, more research. Okay, so in and around the two to three percent, which kind of tracks with that. Okay, for an iron-rich composition, a core of this size, the lunar core, represents merely 1 to 3% of the moon's total mass. Okay, so in and around that sort of range seems to be the thing. Let's just call it 2%. So we need to edit the 35% to 2%. Think that's right. 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%. And 2%. Okay, so if this was the moon, one moon mass, we'd end up with a density of 3.5 grams per centimeter cubed, which is fairly close. I think the moon's density is 3.34 grams per centimeter cubed. So I think we're 
we're gravy there. Okay, yeah, three points. Let's do this. Okay, yeah, that's barely a change, which is kind of neat. If I do implement this in the actual spreadsheet, I'll put in a box, I think, t for you to select what percentage of the mass of the planet is the core, and that will modify this equation somewhat, so it's not hard numbers. But for me, I'm just going to go with the moon's core for the moon and Earth's core, Earth, Earth's core mass fraction for terrestrial planets. Okay, so fine, fine. It's going to have effect on the tides. I think the tides have diminished somewhat. Fine, that's not too bad. 29.167, did that change? Did change, it did change, okay. Oh, and our year lengths changed as well. So what was that? That was, year length was this chip. Okay, so what am I getting here? 21 local months, hmm. I like this spread of leap years. We'll talk about this at a later stage. This is kind of fun. Yeah, I think I want to decrease the amount of months again. So let me fiddle with this. That's nice. 30.167. Okay, which pushes our semi-major axis out a bit, which reduces the tides even further. Hmm. Hmm. Fine. Okay, cool. Parent size and brightness. So this has changed. So daylight has become brighter. And the parent size of the star in the sky has become bigger as well because we've moved our planet inwards. Cool. We did not alter the semi-major axes of our planet, so we're fine here. Happy with that. Nothing has changed here. Nothing has changed here. Everything stays the same. Why is that bright? Oh, snap. Wait a second, hold on. Okay, yeah, so it is still, our outermost gas giant, or our outermost ice giant is still at the cusp of visibility. Yeah, okay. Radii haven't changed. Yeah, okay, cool. The moon has changed. And the radius of the moon will also have changed. Where is my radius? Here we go. Nights have become brighter. Makes sense. We've moved the planet and the moon inwards. They're still pretty dark. And the apparent size has... I can't remember. Is that unchanged? Either way, total eclipses are still possible. Boo. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so I think... Yeah, I think that's everything there. Climate zones, we've not touched that yet. Populations, we've not done that. Calendar, we've done. Okay, I'm going to do one final sweep and then that's it for the polishing episode and we'll get on to more earth science-y mapping climate zone stuff in the next video. So, time lapse engaged. Wait a minute, outermost gas giant at 30 AU, that is incorrect. That is incorrect. And this is also incorrect. Oh, Edgar, you silly man. Oh, no wonder. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, 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 okay. So 18.04. Yeah, because we have a rocky planet. We have Earth, or the Earth-like planet. Skipping that orbit, uh, we have a dwarf planet in an asteroid belt here. We have our big gas giant, and then we have our ice giant. So it's 18.04. 18.04. Cool. And that will drop. Yeah, there we go. We're on the cusp again. Okay, that's why that was the case. Got it. Um, okay. And then this has to be 18.04, which means that our Kuiper belt moves inwards, obviously. God, I hope I actually wrote that in the in the reference doc. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. 23.64 to 28.64. I believe that's the same. Yeah, look at that. Smart past Edgar. <laughs> okay, um, back to time lapse. I just bump up Argon just for the crack.
Okay, so that really is fun. So if our ice giant is at its closest to our home world, its magnitude is plus five. And that really is right on the cusp. That is fun. That is cool. That is some messiness there, but we'll deal with that down the road. Yeah, same thing there, we'll have to deal with that down the road. Okay, okay. All right, that is that. Carbon dioxide rectified, move their planet inwards as a result, reduce the mass of the planet, and then utilize new density equations, plus the fallout thereof. Okay, polishing up episode done. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel on Patreon. Love each and every one of y'all. Until next time, Edgar out.